make sure to like this video as it helps shoot it out into the YouTube universe. Also make sure to comment down below. I was night manager at the diner that was located down the street from where I lived. I had just started working there a few weeks ago. I hated working late hours because I had to walk home since my car had broke down two days after I was hired on. The walking wasn't that much of a big deal because my apartment and job were only two blocks away from each other. And truth be told, I really could have used the exercise to lose a few pounds anyway. But the problem was, I lived in one might call a bad neighborhood. A lot of shady shit that went down at night. But I'm a pretty big guy so people don't normally fuck with me due to my size and all. Not unless it was a small dude with a Napoleon complex trying to prove something. Anyways, one night, I was just about to close up when I saw a man still sitting at one of the tables. He had been sitting there for my entire shift, and all that he had ordered was alcohol, and I could tell that he was pretty drunk. I really didn't think much of it, not until a week had went by and he did the same thing every single night. Same table same drink and even though I am a pretty paranoid person by nature I could have sworn he was watching my every move I even told one of the waitresses named Amy about him and asked her to confirm that he was watching me just so I knew that I wasn't crazy or anything and yes she noticed it as well a few days later, I was out eating dinner with my girlfriend, Katrina, and I heard a guy ordering drinks behind us. And when I looked back, it was the same guy doing the exact same thing as he did at the diner that I had worked at. I wondered if I was just being too paranoid and maybe it was only a coincidence or something since I just happened to live in a small town but when we left the restaurant I noticed that the car behind us was the same guy I was wondering if he was following us so I turned down the street and just as I thought he was following us so my girlfriend got a brilliant idea and told me to drive to the police station and, and what do you know he turned off as soon as I did. This was all getting too damn creepy as I wondered who the hell this man was and what he wanted from me. So the next day on the way to work, I made up my mind that if he was in there stalking me again, I was going to confront him this time and ask him what the hell was his problem. But to my surprise, he wasn't there. A couple of days went by and I didn't see him at all. But one night, while driving my new car that I finally was able to buy, I was on my way home from the movie theater with my girlfriend, Katrina, seeing a movie. And there was a pair of headlights behind us and had been following us for at least 15 minutes. So Katrina told me that no matter what I do, do not go home because I didn't want him knowing where I lived, which of course made sense. So I turned down another street and headed to the grocery store just to see if whoever it was was following me. And as you may have guessed, the car had followed us parking right behind us. I was fed up with this guy and I needed answers and even though Katrina told me not to do it I got out of my car and I walked up to his window and I signaled him to roll it down so he did I just came out and asked him why the hell had he been stalking me for the past few weeks he told me that he had no idea 
what I was talking about and he claimed that he had never saw me before but I told him that he was at the diner where I worked as well as every other place that I had been for over the past few weeks but once again he lied and said that he had no idea what I was talking about so I told him to stay the fuck away from me then I walked back to my car and I got in when I told my girlfriend what he had said, she said there was nothing that we could do about it, and she was right. It wasn't like I had any proof, so I just let it go and I headed back home, but continued to sleep with one eye open. Later that night, around 3.35 a.m., I couldn't sleep, so I got up and I went to the kitchen for a glass of water. And when I looked out of the kitchen window, I saw a dark figure of a man standing in my yard. And when he saw me, he took off running. So I ran outside and ran after him, yelling for him to stay off my property or else I was going to put a hole in his head. Seconds later, I saw the same car that my stalker was driving, speeding off away from my place with his tires skidding loudly. So that was confirmation that he was stalking me. Good thing that I have a quick eye and a good memory as well because I was able to get his license plate number and write it down when I went back inside. I have a friend named Jack who just so happened to be a private investigator so the next morning I called him and I told him about my stalker and I asked him if he could find out who he was by running his plates come to find out the guy was a hitman hired by my ex-wife to kill me my wife and the hitman are now serving time and that was the end to my stalker nightmare I had just moved to California into a large four bedroom house that was left to me by my uncle Ted. It was kind of a fixer upper, but since I had experience in flipping houses back in Texas, I thought that it would be perfect for me. I had no girlfriend or family members who lived in California, and after being in that house alone for a few weeks, I decided to place an ad for a roommate. For the entire week, I interviewed dozens of people, but none of them were the right fit. Most of them were either perverted or too bossy or just downright weird. At that point, I was close to just giving up. But one day at work, one of my friends told me that her friend was looking for a roommate and she had told her about me and that I was looking for a roommate as well. I asked her dozens of questions about her friend and asked if she had any issues, you know, like mental ones, and I asked her what kind of person that she was. She told me that she was cool, just kinda shy, but she guaranteed that I would like her and that we would hit it off. So I agreed for her to come over to the house the next day just for me to get to know her. So the next day around 2 p.m. I heard the doorbell and when I answered it, it was her. Her name was Abigail. She was tall, blonde, extremely thin and very pretty and she was kind of on the nerdy side. I asked her where her car was and how did she get there. She said that she had rode her bike and pointed to it at the side of the house and it was leaning up against the bushes. So I told her to come on in and have a seat and make herself at home. She was very polite as she took off her shoes and sat them near the entrance then came in and she sat down. I asked her if she wanted a drink or something, but she said that she was okay and had brought her own water. 
After asking her dozens of questions and getting to know her, I decided to give her a chance and offered her to be my roommate. She did seem pretty cool and I liked the fact that she respected the fact that we were only going to be roommates and I wasn't looking for any girlfriend or anything like that and that I just wanted to lay that on the line. So the next day was moving day and I helped her with most of her stuff. It was very late when we had finished so I welcomed her and I told her good night and that I would see her in the morning. She smiled then went into her room and we closed our doors. A week had passed and everything was going great. I even got her on at the movie theater where I worked and we seemed to be growing close and was getting along very well. After a couple of weeks, I met this beautiful girl named Shelly, who would come over and spend the night from time to time. Her and Abigail, they got along pretty well. But one night, while Shelly was spending the night, things took a turn for the worse. It was around 2 a.m. when I turned over to hold on to Shelly, but then I noticed that it wasn't Shelly, it was Abigail sleeping there next to me and she was in the nude. I yelled and I told her to get out of my room. Then I asked her where the hell was Shelly. Then I heard yelling and beating on the front door. When I opened it, it was Shelly. She said that Abigail had made her car alarm go off then locked her outside. To make a long story short, I ended up kicking Abigail out, then Shelly had moved in soon after, and everything was great at first, until we noticed that everywhere that we went, Abigail was there stalking us. We even noticed her standing outside of our bedroom window one night, watching us make love, but when I ran outside to confront her, she was gone. And when I called the police and tried to file a report, they told me that they couldn't do anything about it until she actually did something. Uh, you guys know how the cops are. They'll only do something after you've been murdered, which of course is too late. So one night while we were sleeping, we heard the shower in our bathroom and the sounds of a female singing and the lyrics to the song were, kill them all, kill them dead, watch their brains blow out of their heads. That's when we called the cops again and told them that we had an intruder. So both of us left the house and got into our car and we waited in the driveway for the cops to arrive. When they did, 20 minutes later, they ended up arresting Abigail for trespassing, but the problem is she was out of jail in no time and was only given a slap on the wrist since she had no prior felonies. Even till this day, we remain paranoid, wondering if she's still out there stalking us. My family have always been close. As a matter of fact, my family was very close. I couldn't have asked to be born into a more perfect one. You know how most families don't get along from time to time. Well, that was not us. We never argued and we were dedicated to being there for one another, no matter what. Some people may think that we're not perfect for the simple fact that we don't have a mother. Our mother was a drug addict and was very abusive and she left when I was just a small child and we never heard from her since. I myself was too young to even remember her. And you know what? It was fine because our father had always been the best father in the world and that's why it broke our hearts when he died last year from a heart attack. He had forgotten to take his heart medication for nine months and one night while he was asleep, his heart had just 
stopped. I think his death pretty much broke the family. And that's when we became, like all other families, imperfect. So when this happened, I decided to move from Rhode Island to California just to get away and start a new life. A pretty big move for a 22 year old who had been used to having a large family around him all his life. But to be 100% honest, I think I made the right decision. I began working at a small advertising agency located in San Francisco, an agency where I met my wife, Asia, and I love her more than anything. But something happened in my life that almost ended my life. One night, I was out drinking with a few friends at the bar when I found myself too drunk to drive home and my friends that were with me, they all went home with girls that they had met at the bar. Fast forward and I found myself walking home in the rain. It wasn't that bad since I lived only a few blocks away and it usually only took me about 20 minutes to walk home. Before long, I had passed out on the sidewalk. When I woke up, I was in the back seat of a car. I had no idea who the driver was. All I knew is that it was a woman, an older woman. Actually, I never saw her face. I only heard her voice. At first, I wondered how she knew exactly where I lived. But then I noticed that she knew my address from my driver's license that was in my wallet. She dropped me off in front of my house. I thanked her and she was on her way. The next day at the gym, I was trying to get a workout in order to get rid of my hangover. And when I looked out of the window, I saw the same gold car that had dropped me off that night. But when I walked out and began approaching it, she sped off. It was weird. I really didn't think any more about it and just went on with my day. The next night, around 3.30 a.m. in the morning, I heard a car engine humming outside. And when I looked out of my window, it was the same car sitting there in my driveway. And when I walked out and I approached it, she sped off, leaving me in a cloud of smoke. This was beginning to scare me. For the next few days, no matter where I went, I saw that same car. When I told my wife about it, she said looks like I had a stalker and it could be dangerous. Then one night, things had turned deadly, ending in the most shocking way. It was around 2.45 a.m. when I heard the same humming sound of a car outside of my window in my driveway, but this time I was going to give this woman a piece of my mind. I ran out there with a baseball bat and I threatened to call the cops as I ran up to her window tapping on the glass with my bat and she quickly backed up and sped off. But this time I hopped in my car and I sped off after her. It was like a drag race full of road rage and it went on for at least 15 minutes then ended with her car slamming into a brick wall. When I walked up to the car and I looked through the window, the woman's head was laying on the steering wheel and there was blood everywhere. I called 911 and I waited for the paramedics to arrive. But while I was waiting, I was able to ask the woman why she was stalking me. And here is the shocking part. Come to find out, she was my long lost mother. A mother that I had never knew. A mother that had abandoned me as a baby. A mother who was about to stop breathing. And she did. That was a horror that I will never forget.